Glory, hallelujah. Praise is what I do. Amen. My topic tonight is there is power in your praise. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just bless you. We praise you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're leading me and guiding me. And I mind your story that yours. Give you all the praise and glory for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, you know it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. Repeat after me. This is my word of God. My word, word of God. God. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I can be who it says I can be. I can be who it says I can be. I can have what it says I can have. I can have what it says I can have. My life is better. My life is better. Now that I have heard. Now that I have heard. Practice. Practice. And listen. And listen. To this word of God. To this, this word of God. Say Say You are too late. You are too late. You are under my feet. Because you are under my feet. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. There is power in your praise. Did you know that? Amen. And if you didn't, by the time you leave here tonight, you're going to know all about power in your praise. Turn with me to Psalms 34, verse 1, and I'm going to be reading out. Excuse me, the King James Version. Praise. Praise. 
keeps you in his presence and it sends away negativity, fear, and worry. You can't be in God's presence and not experience peace. Amen. Yeah. Wherever you are, you can praise the Lord. Yeah. It brings encouragement to your spirit mm -hmm. and a continual source of strength in your life. Yeah. Praising God also affects our emotions. Even though we are spiritual beings, we also have an emotional nature. Pastor wrote a wonderful book about that. So I hope you all have read it and not get it. Awesome. There are many principles today regarding praise that lie hidden in Psalms 136. We're not going to go on that, but there's lots in there. So there's a book called Healing from Heaven. And it's written by Dr. Leon Lillian Yeomans. That's Y-E-O-M-A-N-S. Dr. Lillian Yeomans. She tells the story about a Christian missionary that went to China years ago. And during that time, it was when China was open to the gospel. Mm -hmm. So she contracted smallpox while she was there. And during those times, they didn't have cures for smallpox. So that was a death sentence. Not like today, we have uh, vaccinations and drugs. But back then, there was no cure. So she caught smallpox. She was quarantined in her room and she was covered from her head, top of her head to the soles of her feet with smallpox. And then it blisters all over you. So, as I said, she was covered. So they quarantined her. And God always rewards the diligent seeker. He tells that in his word, seek me. Seek me and you shall find me. He answers faith-filled prayers. So, faith-filled, sincere prayers. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to say something that something else is coming up. So, <laughs> no. <laughs> then he showed her a vision. So, she went to sleep that night or she was praying to God, you know, and she, he answered sincere fear of prayer. So she's praying, you know, she's calling on the Lord. Then he showed her a vision of two baskets. And this is good. There's a story to this thing. One basket contained the test of the trial, the small box. box. Now he didn't put it on her, you know, and that's from the enemy. You know, he doesn't do evil, but he does allow things to happen. That basket was full. The other basket contained her praise. Mm. That basket was half full. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he also told her to begin to praise him day and night. You should always pray day and night. Okay, so she began to do that. And the villagers just thought she had lost her mind and she was delirious because, you know, she's praying and praising the Lord and, you know, giving him thanks. And, well, she came out the next morning from where she was. They don't tell me how long it was, but she came out and she was completely, completely cured. No more smallpox. Mm -hmm. Pox. I can't, I keep saying pox. <laughs> Small pox. <laughs> there is power in your praise. Mm -hmm. Then there's another couple of little stories I want to tell you. This next one is about, don't know if it's true, it's not in the Bible, it's not, you can't go in there and find it, but there's this story about, that said that there were angels, and they came down every morning, and they had two baskets. And they walked around earth, and at the end of the day, they went back to heaven that night. One basket, you know where I'm going. One basket was for requests. And the other basket was for praise. Mm -hmm. The basket for requests was loaded. Mm -hmm. Running over. Mm -hmm. I'm putting a little more to this because this is exciting. It was running over. It was just full of requests. Mm -hmm. But the basket was the praise. There was hardly anything in there. Hardly anything in there. Hardly anything in there. So the moral of that story is we should be giving more praise than request. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that might be some of the challenges that may be going on. That we
we are asking for a lot of things. You know, we're believing God and we're asking him for it. But there's no praise going on. Amen. 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 More praise. Less asking. Then we may not have to ask for so much. And there's a praise cure. There is a cure. And it's called praise. Yes. People have been searching for help and relief everywhere. Me too. And pay lots of money to cure all sicknesses and diseases, to relieve their pains and ailments. Thousands of dollars to find a cure for their ailments. The Bible tells us about a cure that doesn't cost anything. Someone else has already paid the price. Amen. The cure was the most expensive cure of all to pay for. It cost Jesus Christ, the Son of God, his life. Jesus' death and resurrection provided a cure for us that didn't cost us anything. Amen. Now, if you will administer that cure faithfully, it will work every time. And the name of that cure, as I said, is the praise cure. Mm. The greatest cure known to us as believers can be found in praising God. The greatest deliverance known to man is within the reach of every believer. And it is found in praising God. It's praising him from a sincere heart and of love and gratitude. Not lip service, you know. We're here sometimes and the music is playing and, you know, when you begin to get in and praise, you know, your mind is not on that problem that you have, and those right. circumstances, those troubles, right. you know. Like I said, when you're in the presence of God, all that stuff, anxiety, fear, everything leaves you. When I was, I was you know, what I was going through, I was so sick, I couldn't talk hardly, but I, Thank God. I wasn't thanking him for my condition. Right. I was thanking God because he was going to bring me through. Right. I knew he was. Right. Yeah. He wanted me to go to the hospital. I'm not going. That's what I said. All the way after that, I am not going. I'm believing God. Because he hadn't told me I ain't going nowhere. Back in 120 at least. Hallelujah. And I'm standing on that. Yeah. All right. The praise cure is God's cure. It's a cure that never fails in any circumstance or situation. It is pleasant and it is effective. As you learn to use the power of praise, it will always work for you. And there is no charge for it. Jesus paid the bill. It is, come on, paid in full. Amen. Amen. The praise cure is so effective. It is based on God's word. The reason it is guaranteed to bring results is that it is based on the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary when he paid for our redemption on the cross. As I stated previously, paid in full. There are so many examples in scripture that tell us to give praise to God. And they also give us instructions on how, when, and why. The book of Psalms is full of praise lessons. Let's travel through some of the instructions. Amen? Psalm 92, verses 1 through 2. Verse 1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. Verse 2 says, To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night. Then there's Psalm 100, verse 5. And that's a psalm of praise. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Verse 2 says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. These are all instructions telling us what to do. Know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. And that's some good instruction because I'm always, when I, before I, you know, thank the Lord for waking me up this morning. I do. I just thank him. Let's enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. So before you do anything, before you eat, before you do anything, just thank the Lord. Thank him before you do. And then it says, be thankful unto him and bless his name. Lord, I just bless you. Yeah. I praise you. You are awesome, God. There's none like you. For the Lord is good, verse 5 says. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Now, let's look at Psalm 107, verse 8, King James Version. Psalm 107, verse 8, King James Version. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalm 150, verses 1 through 2, and verses 6 in the King James Version. Psalm 150, 1 through 10, 2, and verse 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. We come in here. This is the sanctuary. So we should be praising God. Yeah. No one should not be sitting around and not praising God. Yeah. He gives you instruction. Praise God in his sanctuary. Amen. Yeah. Praise him, verse 2, for his mighty acts. Yeah. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. And then my faith. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Amen. If you have breath, you should be praising the Lord. Hallelujah. He's the one that gave you that breath. Amen. He woke you up this morning. He sent you on your way. Amen. He keeps you through the night and wakes you up the next day. So you should always praise him. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to let trees and rocks cry for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to praise the Lord. Amen. And the message Bible, you know I like that message Bible. <laughs> 150 verse 1, 2, and 6. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Is this his holy house of worship? Amen. Praise him under the open skies. When you're walking around your yard, when you're walking down the street, that's the open skies. You still can praise him. Praise him while you're walking. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Let everything, breathing, every breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If it's breathing, it ought to be praising God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's turn to some examples of the power of praise. Acts 16, 25. I know you know that. Paul and Silas were in prison. They've done something. They displeased the people because they were pre preaching the gospel and doing things that other people didn't want to see done. But at midnight, and you ever had a midnight? At midnight. That's when you need it. Whatever that thing come up, that's your midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They're not praying to themselves. They're praying out loud. Come on, someone's got to get over there. Like, you know, they can't pray out loud. Pray out loud. Hallelujah. Amen. When I say by grace, I pray out loud. I don't have no headache prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a headache prayer. <laughs> I'm sorry. I want everybody to hear me praise God. That will inspire them. Maybe. Well, maybe I need to thank him for this too. Amen. Amen. Like I said, and the prisoners heard them. All right, so we don't, we're going to another level, right? Pastor's talking about moving to another level. I don't know what happened to me, but I'm going there. I've been there, but I'm going there. And when Dr. Morrell was here that Sunday, I don't know if you all, I know we don't go by Harry Field, but I felt a shift. I felt a 
and we were happy. We were praising God. You know, they were doing as instructed, the young man sang, he spoken with songs, like I said. And I mean, just like the word said, it was just done in that order. And then something happened. Woof, we got to do more of that. Pastor. <coughs> Hallelujah. Got to do more of that. Oh, praise God. And suddenly, woof, suddenly, that was a great earthquake. So that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's band was loose. When you begin to praise God, I mean, really praise Him. You're not thinking about what you're going to have. You're not thinking about, you know, when it's going to happen. Something's going to happen. Oh, it's awesome. I tell you, I do it all the time. I think my neighbors can hear me. I'm so glad sometimes. I know God don't have a hearing problem, but sometimes you just can't help it. You know, you just stop having a song. <laughs> And easy, the song so easy, you know. So. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, your voice begins to rise and rise and rise. It's because you entered in. That's what happened. That's what happened to me. It's like, oh no. I woke up at 4 30 this morning. I was excited. I was thinking about this message the night before. And it was like, you know, and then I was just talking to the Lord, you know, do what you want to do. Let me see. I know I'm going to write stuff down. You got to have a little plan and I'm off track but thing. So anyway, and then I just began to praise him. I had the best night of sleep I have had in a while. I didn't wake up till the next morning. Tried when you can't go to sleep. God praise him God. I tell you everything. I told my friends, I can't listen to music. I know Pastor said you know put some music on. If I do, I'll be up all night praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so to praise God in those circumstances require personal sacrifice. <laughs> it takes an act of their will, and it would take an act of our will to praise God, even though we are going through something. When we bring a sacrifice of praise, we choose to believe that even though life is not going the way you want it to go, God is still good yes, and can be trusted to bring us through. Amen. Yes. When we choose to praise God, in spite of the storm, he is honored, and our faith grows deeper. There's a command in Hebrews 13, 15 that says that this sacrifice is to be offered continually. We are praised continually regardless of our circumstances. It flows continually from a worshiping heart in good times and in bad. Giving praise during challenging times can change your circumstances. You are not praising God for what you're going through, but you are praising him because you know he will bring you through. You want to praise him because you trust that he is faithful and your circumstances will change. You have grateful praise, knowing that he will deliver you. He will bring you through. Hebrews 13, 15 in the Amplified Bible says, Through him, therefore, let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips that thankfully acknowledge and confess and glorify his name. I don't have anything, anything's wrong with clapping, because I clap occasionally, but when they say give praise, my mouth comes over my lips because I want him to hear me. And I'm giving him praise. I can clap for anybody, but for him, he deserves more. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's see what God taught the children of Israel about being able to perform mighty exploits for the Israelites through the praise cure. In 2 Chronicles 20, verses 21 and 22 in the King James Version, it's talking about uh, Jehoshaphat when there was a, some other kings coming up against him and his people, and they were more than they were. And he appointed singers, because the Lord told him to send singers up unto, unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. The Lord will win your battle. Just give him some praise. And when he had consulted, verse 
Second Chronicles 20, 1 and 2 says, or 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. The Bible says that what the Israelites experienced were examples written for our guidance and for our benefit. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 and King James says, Now all these things happen to them, unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. You know, I told you, if you don't understand a word, look it up. So um, ensembles mean an example, a pattern or model for imitation. Admonition means authority, counsel, or warning. And the message Bible. These are all warning markers, danger in our history books, written down so that we don't repeat their mistakes. And when they begin, there's power in the praise. And when they begin to sing and to praise, as I said, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against them, and they were smitten. In the natural, who in the world would send an army to battle with a choir singing praise to the, the wall? Not in this time. This army that we had. You know, they send scouts out, I believe. I've never been in the army, but I heard they send scouts out first to check out the land. But look what he did. He sent singers out, praises out. First, make sure it's God giving you the instructions, though. What the Lord tells you, always line up with his word and it will prosper. So what are you praising about? Recount your victories, what he's already done for you, your past victories he has given to you. And give him praise and honor. That's all it is, just praise and thank you, Lord, for what you did. You know what he did for you. I don't know what he, I know what he did for me. So you just continue to give him praise. That's how it starts. You might not feel like it, but just enter in and see what happens. Try it out. Think of all God has already done for you, and will want, and you will want to praise Him and thank Him for the victory that He is winning for you right now, even though you may only see the victory through the eyes of faith. So I'm going to close with my little, you know, I like to have my little steps. First, give thanks. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, or whatever he's done. You know, whatever he's done. You got food in the refrigerator. Thank him. You got a bed to sleep in. Somebody doesn't. There's lots of things to thank God for. Mm -hmm. Two, give him praise. Right. Praise his name. Bless his name. Tell him how awesome he are. How great he is. He loves praise. He just dwells in our praise. And when we begin to praise, that presence, something happens. The atmosphere changes. Amen. So, thank you so much for listening. So, just remember that there is power in your praise. Amen. Amen. Somebody knock on the door, 
you know, a, you know, a golden egg, or, you know, <laughs> drunk dealer, you know, was being chased by the police off and left the money on the porch or something. You know, so I, I, every morning he would tell me that, you know, every night. And then come from the bathroom, he'd tell me to praise and worship. We had this like 24 uh, foot ceiling and all these glass windows. And I was just praising, and I could see the, the clouds and the, the, uh, the moon and all that out there. And I, I just couldn't grasp how that alone would get us out of a half a million dollars of that. Because not only does the Bible say praise him with understanding, but praise will help you to understand things as well. It'll bring your life to a, a level of knowing things that you haven't known before, comprehending things that you haven't comprehended before. And that's why most of the time in the church, you know, the women are the, one of the smartest ones, but they learn a lot of the praise, and a lot of things they will understand. Now, the Bible says also that they praise him with his lips, with their lips, but their hearts were far from them. Because sometimes praise can be an act. It can be a show. You know, you know let, let's put it this way. Have you ever been in a service, you know the people, and then when they had a guest speaker, and then that person don't really say anything, and they really praising God, like, you know, being God, just, you know, left wall block together or something like that. You know, they're just really praising God. And sometimes people do that out of acts. But I'm going to tell you, you have to praise God with understanding. And understanding, what you like, she was going to take us through the book of Psalms, all the way up to Acts with Paul and Silas, and help us to see what can happen when you praise? And praise is not always something that you really want, you, you feel like doing all the time. That's why I say sometimes the Bible says give them what? Sacrifice of praise. That means at the point you feel like, I don't feel like you lift up my hands. I'm, now, I don't feel like going to the mailbox. He said, that's the time. Now, I was at the gym today, and the guy said, you know, after the holiday, everybody's trying to get back in the mood of working out and everything. He said, my body just didn't feel like doing it. And I just won't, won't, won't do it and won't come in and everything. I said, that's the time to do it. I said that yesterday, you know, I was murmuring, complaining, and whining. My wife said, just go on to the gym, work out. You know, you need to go ahead and go. And that's when you have your best results when you don't feel like doing it, when you're afraid and look like nothing's going to work out for you. You know, the enemy, I call them smoke screens. The enemy throw all that up before you and look like it's going to be terrible. Look like you got to, you got to do something. But how you, if you could actually do something, it would have been done. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so when you get into that praise, that praise shows, how can I say, the circumstances or the atmosphere or the environment that is about to shift, is about to change. But see, when you do it with understanding, that's when the power comes. You just can't do it because you're going to say, okay, praise people. Everybody stand up with Sean. Just come up here, you know, and everybody stand up. Everybody clap their hands. I'm going to tell you, to praise God when faces is not praising God, it takes somebody to know God in order to do that. Amen. Because that's the, that's the time we say to God, we should be looking. We should already have an offering all of those straight, et cetera, et cetera. And when, when they preach it and sing it, they'll all do the service, they even announce it because we're here to not just, hey, let's do this hour and a half in church. We're here to show praise, thanksgiving unto God. And I'm going to tell you something, a good attitude got to go along with that yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. A good attitude. But one time a lady was in church, she was praising so hard, I was going to tell her she needed to stop. You know why? Because she was doing it in an irritating manner. Mm -hmm. She was right over somebody's head and yelling all over the heads. You know, you don't do that to a person when they are a, a un, when they're not a church goer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when non when non church goers come to church, you don't praise on top of their heads. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? They not come back to church again. Yeah. All right, but they think something wrong with people who praise and hollering and thanking God for somebody they can't see. You know, what they brought them through. Which, which, if you just knew what he brought me through, what did he bring me through? They don't even know that. So we have to be skillful in praise. Amen. And you might think you praise the God, God said you mess up the whole show. Not the whole show, but you mess up the whole strategy for winning someone's soul today because, you know, you know when you you know when you bring company over the house and children want to act up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the way I'm kinda like saying that. And so um, we have to make sure that we praise him you know, with understanding. And it don't have to be valid. It don't have to be that everybody know that you're doing it. God just needs to know what you're doing. My grandma used to praise God like this. She used to throw her hand back and forth yeah. like this. Yeah. And in the church where we was raised at, that won't allow. You can't do it. You can't be moving yourself. You couldn't, you couldn't move the communion table. You 
He couldn't stand up and do all this. Now that the preacher was preaching, then it's all fine. You know, you put some wood in the furnace and everything. But hey, my brown boy, do like this, she'll say, thank you. She said, thank you. That's how she said it, just like that. Thank you. And the ushers come over there, try to fan and everything. You know, the one usher try to hold it, another usher, and all those ushers going this way. <laughs> <laughs> all that strip. Now you, when somebody's praising God, you got if you know that they're praising God, it's power around that person. Only thing you want to make sure that they don't fall off the stage or something to that degree. But don't try to you know, don't try to retain a person like that. Like I said, in place of danger. But they just do it like this. So don't, don't try to mess with them because the strength of Samson will come on them. They make you look funny while you're up there. But just turn to the book of um, Philippians right quick. I'm going to just um, share with the Lord, share with me while I'm sitting there. Uh, the book of Philippians, chapter 4. And in verse 6, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known, be made known unto God. And then he said, The peace of God, which passes all understanding, should keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Okay? Now, so we have to get to the peace of God. So I say the peace of God. Peace of God. And one of the ways to get to the peace of God is by making your request may know. And then the peace of God will pass all those things to keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus, but it keep your hearts and mind, okay? It keep you to a place where you, um, I would say, in neutral. But then there's another shift. Somebody said another shift. He said, finally, brother, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are uh, honest? What things are uh, just? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are a good report? Then he says this. He said, if Watch that. And if there be any virtue, true for power, and if there be any praise, he said, do what? Thank God what? These things. So watch it now. You can know all of these things, but could not be able to think on them because life they hit you so hard. But once you begin to praise God, your understanding comes to the things that you have been taught. The Bible says in verse 9, those things that you have both learned, these things also, which you both learn um, and receive them. And heard and seen of me do it, and the God of peace shall be with you. So watch this now. Once you begin to praise God and glorify Him, an understanding will come to you. Uh -huh. Are you hear what I'm saying? And you are capable of thinking on the right things. And a number of times that you know life can hit you so hard and, and you just can't think on the right things. But see, praise was still the enemy from bombarding your mind. It will cause that, that chaotic cloud to fall so you can think on those right things. You can think on those things that are of uh, 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 understand, those things that are pure, those things that are love, those things that are just, et cetera, et cetera. But if you murmur, you complain about your mind locks up. Once you begin to praise God, an understanding comes to you. Amen. You know, that kind of goes with the book we were teaching me the first thought positive. First thought positive, first thought positive. I can't, that's all he's been telling me for a couple of weeks. First thought positive, first thought positive. And you have to say it every day. My first thoughts are positive. And as I'm saying that one, that's an act of praise. Amen. Because see, when you think down and, and frustration and contrary and division mind, that is not praise. When you're thinking well of a person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then you open up your mouth, even if that person has mistreated you, but if you open up your mouth for praise, then the understanding of that person, of that situation will come to you. You begin to see it with a different light in life. Amen? So it shines the light of God's understanding on every situation, every subject. So instead of, you know, getting upset about what's going on in the house or with your child or the finance, et cetera, et cetera. You know, when money hits you, money problems hit you, instead of saying, oh, every time I turn around, I used to say, Lord, I thank you, I pray that I'm a tithe. Yeah, yeah. And see, it didn't know what he going to tell you. He said, now ask me what you must do. See, every time, a lot of times people want to, you know, um, they want to be a millionaire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but you need to ask God, what must I do to be one? Amen. I mean, we wanted to be saved, right? We want to be baptized. But well, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be baptized? Yeah, we got to ask God for what must I do to, to have those things. And so when you begin to praise God and praise God, you begin to realize that God has another avenue for bringing in what you're praying for. Amen. 
And the people say, I'm praying for wealth for this, I'm praying for this and that and that. And we gotta ask God, what must I do? I ask God, I said, well, what must I do to make 4.5 million dollars? What must I do? <laughs> Amen. I just go pray and make confession for full 4.5 million dollars. Amen. I said, what must I do for it? Amen. Now praise God, because God will give you the wisdom, the understanding, and the divine connections to bring about what you ask him. What must I do? Amen. See, praise is what you do, but praise will provoke you to do something as well. To go to the next level. We can't keep praising a God who will do everything and you don't have nothing. Yeah, now, come on, listen to me now. And see, a lot of people, in a similar way, what do you praise them for? Your car all messed up and this and that and that. You said, you just don't know. You know, uh, what the Lord has done for me. This, yeah, that's good. But God said, let's go to the next level because praise should have a testimony attached to it somewhere. Yeah. You can't keep praising the Almighty God and say how the same old mighty things. <laughs> oh, my things. You follow what I'm saying? He wants to take us to a level that the world will see he's worth praising. Because mm -hmm. the Bible, she did quote this, that he praised the Lord for all of his goodness towards man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Amen. So it benefits you and I to praise God. And the reason why we want to praise them, I mean, it's like when you see my little nieces and them, they come run on me because they know they're going to get something. They know, they, they know that Uncle Lewis got something for them. Amen. When I got back from vacation, I came to my mom's house. My little great niece said she was in the bathroom. Use the bathroom. Sherman come through the door. She jumped off the bathroom. I said, oh, wash your hands. Sherman, baby, come on. Social distance, social distance. Back up. Hey, you know? But she know that Uncle Lewis was in the house. <laughs> she said she just ran from it, from the, you know, the throne, whatever you want to call it. Run right down the hall. Amen. Because when you know goodness is there, when you know how good God is, I don't care what you've been through. Yeah. That, that ain't nothing. Yeah. You don't know what I've been through. So? Huh? Yeah. Mm -mm. You, you, you yeah. should have some compassion. I've been sick. I've been this. And nobody helped me. That So? Mm -hmm. Do you know that God you serve? Mm -hmm. If you actually do the God you serve, you'll be sitting there with that whiny, piney, cooly oh. mouth that you have. Right. You'll be praising him with those lips instead of complaining oh. with those yeah. lips. Because God can actually do it. So why sit there and let trouble stay when you can move it out of the way and go to the next level and praise? I'm just trying to make it, but you're going to make it that way. Let's you open your mouth and say, God, I thank you that you made a way for me, and I praise you for it. The praise will accelerate the results to come to manifestations. It will accelerate. It will cause it to come quickly. But you got to say, you can't have, you got to get rid of all defense, or what you call it, retaliation. Gossip, all that's going to put the back. My Bible said praise will purify our man. Yes. And the more you praise God, you praise God, you start to think, stink about somebody, praise it. Let's not do that. Praise it. Let's go to the next level. Praise it. Forgive them. He said, because we got some up here who want that's about to manifest. Like, forgive this ain't perfect. Amen. So praise does so much more than to say we praise God. It benefits you more than it benefits God. Yeah. Amen. Now, it glorifies. Yeah. Now, God likes to show off and flex, flex his muscles and all that stuff. But watch this now. God is already good. Yeah. He said, you praise me so you can see how good I am towards you. Because when you're not praising, you're missing out on this thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When I come out here to preach, man, I praise God before I come out here. And notice something. I don't do the traditional things to come out on the second song unless I you know something else happened. I always try to get here on the first song. I like hearing Sean sing. <laughs> I like that this, this year. So I love the songs that she's singing. I think I can sing better than she can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't yeah. I'm just telling the truth. I ain't said I could. I said I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the selections that she bring forward. I don't want to miss out on that. So I have a bunch of the bathroom. Make sure I got my key dog. I come on down here. I get right up in here. Amen. I won't be involved with parades. I won't parade up in here on the third yeah. song. I'll miss out. Amen. So praise is vital. Praise is vital. We have to have you can't you can't live this life, this this um, uh, divine life without praising God. You say, Well, I pray, but I don't praise. Well, you ain't praying really if you ain't praising. Right. Amen. Yeah. If you ain't praising, you, you ain't praying. See, you got, you got to have it. Mm. You know why? Because you, you read it in Psalm 150, he said, Let everything. The last verse of the last chapter, let everything. The half breath, praise the Lord. Then he said, praise you, the Lord. He said, if you have breath, praise him. Then he said, do it, God. I know you have breath. Because you just read the scripture. He said, praise you, the Lord. 
And you got to look at the Bible the way the Bible's talking to you, not just read it. It's not, yeah. it's yeah. not like a textbook. Yeah. Yeah. It's a book of life. That means that it's living. It can communicate. It can talk to you. Yeah. It can give you some wisdom and understanding, some guidance and counseling and so forth. It can respond to you the same way another person can respond to you. So we thank God for that word tonight. Amen. Amen. We give God praise for it. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God is so good. So people, God, make sure we keep that in. And I'm going to tell you, I know you like your, you know, your little radio station. You got, what is it? What is it? Love. K-Love, we got K-Love, we got Praise 104.7. But sometimes God said, I want to hear you. Mm -hmm. he, said, he, said, he said, don't worry about the instruments. He said, I got the instruments. It's called a melody. Okay, he said, that what the Bible said, and make a melody in your hearts unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And watch this. And why you, why you singing to God? God got other music playing. You just can't hear it. He got other music playing along with that. That's why you get a little beat and a little, and a little rhythm. You come on something. You put a beat up in your spirit. You just can't hear it like you want, but you can, you can feel the vibes. And you know what? I like God. I like to crank the bass up, too. He like to crank the bass. He like, he like it loud. He like it loud. He like lights. He likes colors. Amen. See, it's not really disco. It's really divine, though. That's what's not disco. It's divine, though. The devil took everything. Uh, he has tried to take all those things. And we'll praise God. And then religiously try to water it down and make it boring. And one ride the world lets him come to, to hear our gospel because it, it get boring. They don't want to say all the hymn book. You can take the hymn book and jazz it up. Amen. But some real praise. But we got to make sure that what you're saying is unto him. It's not just a hymn book. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Because yeah. yeah. some, some of those hymns ain't correct. So it got to be a song about, it got to be a hymn book, not an a H-I-M book, not an H -Y -N -M book. Yeah. A hymn book, amen. Yeah. You'll sing from there. You can go straight to the book of Psalms and start to sing. Yeah. Matter of fact, you can talk about the testimony or, or the, the accident that he delivered from and turn it into a song. Yeah. Oh, amen. Yeah. Or get to work on time, you can turn it to the song. <laughs> I found him and so glad I made it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go ahead and dismiss right there. Let us pray. Father, come on, give God the praise for you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And Hallelujah. Down, please do so, but let's give God some praise. Thank you, Lord God. Let's, let's bless him. Let's thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. We Lord, for everything you've done for, we put a praise Thank on that. You. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. helping us in every situation, we put a praise thank on that, oh God. Lord. Lord, God. Lord, we just want to thank you right now in Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. <laughs> we put a praise on that, oh God. Thank you, Lord, Lord God. God. Take away the sweat from us, Lord God, the struggle. We put a praise on that. We're moving in the nightmares, Lord God. We put a praise on that, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And we glorify your holy name. And Lord God, when we come back in here on Sunday, it's going to be lit. For you. We're going to pray for you. It's going to be lit. Thank you, Lord. I get God said, now it's going to be lit. He said, when it's lit, he said, it's going to be contagious. All right. You can't sit beside fire and don't get me burned. It's impossible. Thank you, Lord. Everybody, yeah, everybody gonna hear this. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Peace and blessing, prosperity. Ask God for what you need right now in prayer. Ask Him for what you need in Jesus' name. Pray to Him in Jesus' name. Whether you're healed, dealing with any obstacle, do it now, Jesus. Amen. And then put a praise on it. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's opportunity to increase. Amen. It's opportunity to increase. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you, when you know God, your offerings change. <laughs> Your givings and your receivings change. So you need to offer all of Please raise your hand if you want to have a list of your envelope. 
You know, most of us already are, are prepared for those who may be watching us by live stream or social media. If you choose to like to give into our towards the service tonight, you can go to Give it a five year app store, and then type in Increase International Ministries and look for the pastor's pictures there. Or you can go to Increase International Ministries.com and click on the traffic blue button, or you can mail it in at um, P.O. Box 2295, Chesterfield, Virginia. Give us one second at P.O. Box 2295, Chesterfield, Virginia, Chesterfield, Virginia, 23832. Or come by and visit us at 6511 Belmont Road. We want to have you. And when you do come, let us know um, that you're here so we can love on you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That concludes our service for tonight. Go in peace. God bless you. Thank you for viewing.